Um, for those who don't remember, my name is John Meyerhofer. I work at uh, the Hill Museum and Manuscript Library. Um, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about Himmel, but mostly about one of our, our digital tools uh, called vHimmel. Um, and that's going to be primarily most of what I'll be talking about. Um, vHimmel is essentially a catalog, a catalog and kind of a, a set of resources and tools for the study of manuscripts. Um, so for those who don't know, Himmel has uh, digitized manuscripts. We go around the world to digitize manuscripts. Um, some of those manuscripts um, are ours, but most of them are not. We uh, work with sites where manuscripts are at risk and we help digitize them on site. Uh, they keep a copy of the digital, um, they keep a copy of the digital images and then they send us a copy of the digital images. We put them up onto the Himmel to make them accessible for scholars. The um, project for the V. Himmel project uh, got started in 2015 and has seen a series of like three development uh, phases. Uh, and those were primarily grant funded by NEH and um, a few other partners. Um, and as I said, it's, it's a catalog for manuscripts. It's a custom built application. Um, we are adding images and metadata all the time. We've got a, a bunch of great curators. Um, David uh, Calabro, who is one of them. David, raise your hand, please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, he, uh, he, he's our, 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 I can't remember your exact title, Syriac and? Uh, Eastern Christian and Islamic. Yes, yes, exactly. So we've got um, a, great, a bunch of great catalogers who can look at these manuscripts, who know how to read the manuscripts, and then uh, who can catalog them and put them into our systems for scholars to come um, and either virtually or in person come and look at them, study them, um, and work with our staff. Um, the project originally got started in 1965 by a monk um, who went around Europe digitizing manuscripts to, at the time, save them from um, the impending doom or, or, or the, the what he saw as, as a potential loss for these manuscripts. They could get lost or wrecked um, at, relatively after um, World War II. Um, so let's, let's take a look at V. Himmel. Okay, so V. Himmel, like I said, uh, has, it's a set, it's a catalog, but it's also got a set of other tools. Reading Room is uh, the primary application, and this is the catalog. Um, this is where scholars can go and search for manuscripts. Um, they can um, view the images for manuscripts. We don't have images for all of our manuscripts, um, being that some are still in microfilm in um, the Himmel vault. Um, I should note that because of the contracts we have to sign with these um, uh, partners around the world. So, um, registration is required for some of the um, images. Some of the images that we own, we make freely accessible. Um, you don't have to register, um, but on Reading Room, um, registering for the application is free and easy. It's quick, um, but it is required in order to see some of the images. So within Reading Room, you can uh, just kind of browse collections based on common themes or you can use our search interface to really kind of get into the nitty gritty and find out specific manuscripts for a, a specific country or city or repository using a shelf marker. Um, this application has been designed from the, the bottom up to be a manuscript database. So it, it's specific for manuscripts and it's very con, um, customized for the manuscripts. So if we just take a look at, uh, if I do a simple search, these are all of the, or not all, but these are some of the, the manuscripts that you can see that, that Himmel owns or Himmel has in their collection. So if we go and we look at uh, one of them, you can see that on the left is the image viewer, so you can see all the images, and then on the right we've got kind of all the metadata that the curators um, at Himmel have put in. Um, on the right, or yeah, on the, on the left, I'm sorry, in the image viewer, you can see that this specific manuscript has actually a few different pages 
so a user or a scholar could scroll through those pages and uh, see them. The viewer that we have is using the, the Mirador viewer, if, um, for those who have heard of it. So your uh, scholars are able to zoom in, and we've actually got pretty high resolution images. You can zoom pretty far into them. Uh, the viewer also allows for manipulating brightness and contrast. Um, you can invert the colors, um, and you can rotate it. Um, so if you wanted to study specific um, things like the image or um, see specific characters on the manuscript. Yes? Uh, we may want to mention, um, in addition to manuscripts, there are rare print books also on here. So yes. this is an example of a rare print book. But yes, thank but you, yeah, David. All of which would be out of copyright, so there aren't copyright issues associated with those. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. That's a good point. We do have, like as David said, we have printed books, rare books. We've also got some archival material in here as well. Um, so that's reading room. Uh, the interesting thing that you could do as well is if you wanted to study this, this image, um, if you compared it to another image, uh, the application implements the IIIF um, protocol. So it's a way for um, sharing images around the world and, and allowing them to be kind of used in different viewers. So I can take this URL and copy it and then um, compare it to a different, say, book or manuscript. So if I use this viewer to add that manuscript to the right-hand side, I just pasted that URL in and I loaded it. Um, and then I can view them. So I, I can view both of those manuscripts um, side by side. This is a, a, a tool that I know scholars um, like and to be able to compare manuscripts and be able to view multiple images and be able to compare them uh, next to each other. So that's the, um, one of the bigger pieces of the VHIMLE uh, application is reading room. Uh, we also have a school application um, which uh, teaches uh, about scripts and manuscripts. In particular, uh, the, you could learn Latin script, uh, Syriac script, and Arabic scripts. Um, I won't go into that in too much detail. We've also got some, uh, I think of these as more supporting applications. The folio application uh, is used to see how writing scripts have changed over time. Um, with these, these are kind of like um, focus manuscripts or good examples of manuscripts of certain scripts and languages. Um, and all of these have been translated and um, actually go into a deeper dive about the paleography. So you can see here, this manuscript has um, actually been translated. The lexicon application is used for just terms about manuscripts. The reference application is, is, is a bibliography, kind of a, a reference bibliography um, about manuscripts. So again, these are supporting applications. Um, and the newest, one of the newest parts of VHIMLE is we recently added the museum application. And this is specifically de uh, designed for highlighting um, the Arca Ardium collection that we have and those museum objects as they've been digitized. We also have a few other collections um, we've got some historical slides <clears throat> that we highlight, as well as um, other art objects that we have from other sites that we've worked on, specifically in Malta right now. This is our, like I said, our newest application um, and is being constantly added to. So we're adding, we're transitioning from a, an old database to this database as a, for our display. The, um, the interesting thing about museum as compared to reading room is all of these objects are open and viewable. You don't have to register. And again, here you can see the real power of um, share, or, uh, viewing images uh, next to each other. So I could compare this uh, image of um, Christ compared to uh, this image. So, and being that some of these images are very, you know, the detail is amazing. You can really zoom in on and, and compare, you know, if you were 
I don't know anything much about art, but if you're about you know studying brush strokes or you can study historical um, things, so I think there's a lot of there's some power here. The nice thing I will just pause. The nice thing is is that Himmel is here on campus, so a lot of these materials could be explored digitally and online, but they can also be explored um, in real life. We we, we have. Um, student groups and classrooms who come into the Himal area and they are able to work with the manuscripts, they're able to touch real books. Um, we have art objects that can be used and explored in different contexts for classrooms as well. Um, the, how am I doing on time here? Okay, all right. Um, the final thing that I'll talk about is um, in a recent, recently, in the last year and a half, we added uh, the data portal to vHimmel, and this was all structured around making our data more accessible um, to scholars and users so that all of that metadata that describes all of our objects can be used programmatically, whether it's in Python or some other programming language, um, or can be used in, in digital, um, digital humanities projects. So we built this interface that emulates the same search interface that you get in Reading Room, but instead of searching objects, digital objects, what you're searching here is you're searching the data that corresponds to those objects. So if I do that same search that I did in Reading Room, I'm getting a list of not the objects this time, but I'm getting a, a list of all of the data associated with those objects. So from here, I could download the full data, everything that we have corresponding to those 316 objects. Or I can just download the visible data that you see here, which is a common request that we get, country, city, repository, and shelf mark, and, and the Himmel project number. I can just download that. Now those files are JSON files, which is a, unfortunately, bummer. Um, which is a common uh, format for sharing um, data that's um, non-proprietary. Non um, so if we look at one of these files, we can see kind of that basic structure. So you can see that the uh, Country City Repository Shelf Mark and Himmel Project Number were all kind of downloaded as part of that, that file. So this file can then be in turn used in a DH project. If you were studying, say, all of the objects at Himmel, you could do a project where you utilize this data. Um, if you were doing a project on, say, Malta, and you could, you could study all of the objects that we have from Malta, and you could study all of those. Where, where are they from? You could, you know, utilizing the data that we have in, in VHIMO. So what, what we did was we designed data, uh, the data portal to be able to make our data more accessible, but we also tried to not just leave it there. Um, we, we also um, developed what, we, what we're calling VHIMO DH or VHIMO Digital Humanities. And this is a separate site that provides examples to scholars about how to take your data from VHIML and move it into a DH project. So what we've done here is we've, we've given a couple examples of example projects, and these are actually projects that were developed by a curator at, at HIMMEL, um, where he took the data from the data portal and it created a, manipulated the data and created a DH project. So on this site, we actually just um, we break down the project, we talk about what the project is, how we went about developing the project, taking that JSON file from, um, from vHimmel data portal, manipulating the data, and then turning it into a map. So in this instance, he took that country city repository data and he's, uh, he turned it into a map. And again, we've, rather than just kind of, you know, dump the data and um, allow scholars to kind of do with it what they want, we wanted to, to, to take the, and hold, hold, hold scholars' hands a, a little bit more to help show some examples of how you can take the VHIML data a little bit further. So we break it down, uh, show them how to go about it, go through all of the steps. So 
you could use this as a template for creating your own DH project um, utilizing behemal data, but we've also, we actually um, have a DH project website. So if you were to implement a DH project, this could, this is an example of what that would look like. So obviously there's uh, other scholarship that the curator went through to talk about uh, Gia Devani Adria, but the implementation of using the VHIML data comes about on the map page. And I don't know why it's not looking. There it is. So you can see that this is a map of all of the Giovanni Giovanni maps, um, of manuscripts that talk about that person that we have at Himmel. So I just want to um, reiterate that we have this tool where you can access data for uh, DH projects, but we're also available for those in, in, in real life kind of opportunities. Um, for the museum um, application, if you're interested in, in talking to us about coming in and viewing real objects, Tim Turnus is, um, is uh, a good resource that you can contact. Feel free to contact him. Um, we also, for if you're interested in using manuscripts in any of your classes, uh, you can talk to Matt Heitzelman or uh, Tim Turnus as well. And here is just a, an example that we had last spring where we had a class who came into uh, Himmel and, and used uh, some of the books and manuscripts that we have to, to learn about the golden age of Spain. Um, and that was a, uh, about a, a part of the scholarship and creativity day. Um, I think that's it. Are there any questions? Yes. So you sort of showed some of the artwork in here, and they're all 2D. Do you guys have any 3D examples? Yeah, we actually do. Um, we, um, we actually have quite a prized collection of, um, oh, it's down right now. I don't know where it is. It's here, I think it's here. Uh, of um, pot pottery. So you can see um, these are some of the um, pottery. And I don't know much about this collection, but I know that you can see the date on these. These are incredibly old. These are incredibly old. And some of them are actually on display. Um, if you walk in, not into Himmel, but it's in this, the side of the atrium, just right over here, you can see them. Um, but there's no way to kind of like use the software to move the pottery around no. and look at the different sides. Of it. No, no. We, we did talk about that, um, but I think that was a little bit beyond scope. We talked about, um, in some instances, we, we do have more images of 3D objects. So we might um, have, say, three or four images as the pot moves. Um, but no, we don't have that kind of manipulation, kind of in real, real time manipulation. All right. I know it's lunchtime, so probably everybody wants to go. <laughs> All right, thank you.